Richard Burwell of New York will never cease to regret that the French language was not made part of his education. This is why. On the second evening, after Burwell arrived in Paris, feeling lonely without his wife and daughter, who were still visiting a friend in London, his mind naturally turned to the theatre. So, after consulting the daily amusement calendar, he decided to visit the Folie Bergère, which he had heard of as one of the notable sites. During an intermission, he went into the beautiful garden, where gay crowds were strolling among the flowers and lights and fountains. He had just seated himself at a little three-legged table with a view to enjoying the novel scene, when his attention was attracted by a lovely woman, gowned strikingly, though in perfect taste, who passed near him, leaning on the arm of a gentleman. The only thing that he noticed about this gentleman was that he wore eyeglasses. Now Burwell had never posed as a captivator of the fair sex, and could scarcely credit his eyes when the lady left the side of her escort, and turning back, as if she'd forgotten something, passed close by him and deftly placed a card on his table. The card bore some French words written in purple ink, but not knowing that language, he was unable to make out their meaning. The lady paid no further heed to him, but rejoining the gentleman with the eyeglasses, swept out of the place with the grace and dignity of a princess. Burwell remained staring at the card. Needless to say, he thought no more of the performance or of the other attractions about him. Everything seemed flat and tawdry compared with the radiant vision that had appeared and disappeared so mysteriously. His one desire now was to discover the meaning of the words written on the card. Calling a fiacre, he drove to the Hotel Continental, where he was staying. Proceeding directly to the office and taking the manager aside, Burwell asked if he would be kind enough to translate a few words of French into English. There were no more than 20 words in all. Why, certainly, said the manager with a French politeness, and cast his eyes over the card. As he read, his face grew rigid with astonishment. And looking at his questioner sharply, he explained, Where did you get this, monsieur? Burwell started to explain, but was interrupted by, That will do, that will do, you must leave the hotel. What do you mean? asked the man from New York in amazement. You must leave the hotel now, tonight without fail, commanded the manager excitedly. Now it was Burwell's turn to grow angry, and he declared heatedly that if he wasn't wanted in this hotel, there were plenty of others in Paris where he would be welcome. And with an assumption of dignity, but piqued at heart, he settled his bill, sent for his belongings, and drove up the Rue de la Paix to the Hotel Bellevue, where he spent the night. The next morning he met the proprietor, who seemed to be a good fellow. And being inclined now to view the incident of the previous evening from its ridiculous side, Burwell explained what had befallen him and was pleased to find a sympathetic listener. Why, the man was a fool, declared the proprietor. Let me see the card. I will tell you what it means. But as he read, his face and manner changed instantly. This is a serious matter, he said sternly. Now I understand why my confrère refused to entertain you. I regret, monsieur, but I shall be obliged to do as he did. What do you mean? Simply that you cannot remain here. With that, he turned on his heel, and the indignant guest could not prevail upon him to give any explanation. We'll see about this, said Burwell, thoroughly angered. It was now early noon, and the New Yorker remembered an engagement to lunch with a friend from Boston, who with his family was stopping at the Hotel d'Alma. With his luggage on the carriage, he ordered the cocher to drive directly there, determined to take counsel with his countryman before selecting new quarters. His friend was highly indignant when he heard the story, a fact that gave Burwell no little comfort, knowing, as he did, that the man was accustomed to foreign ways from long residence abroad. It is some silly mistake, my dear fellow. I wouldn't pay any attention to it. Just have your luggage taken down and stay here. It is a nice, home-like place, and it'll be very jolly, all being together. But first, let me prepare a little nerve settler for you. 
After the two had lingered a moment over their Manhattan cocktails, Burwell's friend excused himself to call the ladies. He had proceeded only two or three steps when he turned and said, Let's see that mysterious card that has raised all this row. He had scarcely withdrawn it from Burwell's hand when he started back and explained, Great God, man! Do you mean to say this is simply... Then, with a sudden movement of his hand to his head, he left the room. He was gone perhaps five minutes, and when he returned, his face was white. I am awfully sorry, he said nervously. But the ladies tell me that that is my wife. She has a frightful headache. You will have to excuse us from the lunch. Instantly realising that this was only a flimsy pretense, and deeply hurt by his friend's behaviour, the mystified man arose at once and left without another word. He was now determined to solve this mystery at any cost. What could be the meaning of the words on that infernal piece of pasteboard?